This video contains solutions to sample problems from section 6.3 on Taylor and Maclaurin series. For these first few examples, we're going to be practicing finding the Taylor polynomial for a given degree for a given function. So the formula we're going to be using is that our function can be expressed as a power series of the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of the nth derivative of f evaluated at the center a divided by n factorial multiplied by x minus a to the n. So this coefficient here is what I may often call c sub n, the coefficient of the x minus a to the n term. In this case, our center is a equals 0, so it simplifies down to f to the n evaluated at 0 divided by n factorial times x to the n. And again, it's still the sum as we go from n equals 0 to infinity. And this is sometimes called a Maclaurin series when it is centered at 0. So this is our general Taylor series formula. And then specifically when we're centering at zero, we will often call that a Maclaurin series, although a Maclaurin series is just a special kind of Taylor series. So the main work that needs to be done here is figuring out these derivatives. And because we're being asked for the third degree Taylor polynomial, there are four coefficients we need to figure out. We need to figure out c0, we need to figure out c1, c2, and c3. Those are the constant term, the coefficient of x, the coefficient of x squared, and the coefficient of x cubed. So the first thing we need to do is take our function and plug in zero. Again, plugging in our center, that's going to give us the sine of 2 times 0, which is 0. And so c0 will be that 0 that we got divided by 0 factorial, that 0 divided by 1, which is just 0. What about c1? So for that, we need the first derivative of our, of our function. The derivative of sine of 2x is 2 times the cosine of 2x. And then we plug in 0. We get 2 times the cosine of 2 times 0. That's 2 times the cosine of 0, which is 2. So c1 here is 2 divided by 1 factorial, which is 2 divided by 1, which is 2. Next, we need c2. For that, we need the second derivative. So we take another derivative. The derivative of 2 cosine 2x is going to be minus 4 sine of 2x. Every time we take a derivative here, we're going to get an extra factor of 2 popping out by the chain rule. And so then we get f double prime of 0, which is negative 4 times the sine of 2 times 0. That's just going to be 0. So c2 will also be 0. And then finally, f triple prime of x, we take one more derivative because we're going up to the third degree. That's going to give us negative 8 cosine of 2x. Again, we plug in 0. We're always plugging the center into this function. And so we get negative 8 times the cosine of 2 times 0, which is negative 8 times 1, which is negative 8. So we get negative 8 divided by 3 factorial. That's minus 8 divided by 6, also known as minus 4 thirds. So these are the coefficients of our polynomial. And so the actual polynomial that we're getting, p3, is going to be 0 plus 2 times x plus 0 times x squared plus negative 4 thirds times x cubed, or to simplify that a little bit, 2x minus 4 thirds x cubed. And so that's the polynomial that we get. Again, we could keep doing this. The more terms we figure out, the more accurately our polynomial is going to approximate our function near our center. But they told us to stop at the third degree, so that's our answer. All right, similar problem, this time again, third degree Taylor polynomial, but this time our center is a equals one. So what we're looking for is our function, f g of x in this case, is going to equal the series n goes from zero to infinity of f nth derivative or g nth derivative here, evaluated at our center, which is one, divided by n factorial, multiplied by x minus our center to the nth power, so x minus one there. So again, we're going to the third degree, which means there's four coefficients we need to figure out. First thing we need to do is take our center and plug it into our original function. That's going to give us one divided by one, which is one. So that means c1, sorry, c0, is that number divided by zero factorial. Zero factorial is one, so we just get one. Then we take a derivative, g prime of x. The derivative of one over x is minus one over x squared. Then we plug z, uh, our center one into that derivative. That's going to give us negative one. So c1 will be that negative 1 that we got divided by 1 factorial, which is negative 1. Remember, we're always taking the value that we get out of the derivative and dividing it by n factorial. Next derivative is g double prime. We'll think of negative 1 over x squared as minus x to the minus 2. That makes taking the derivative a little bit easier. So that's going to give us positive 2 multiplied by x to the minus 3. We plug 1 into that. That's going to give us 2. So c2 will be 2 divided by 2 factorial. 2 factorial is 2, so that's 2 over 2, which is 1. And then finally, g triple prime here will be negative 6x to the minus 4. We plug 1 into that. 
and that's just going to give us the negative 6. So C3 here is minus 6 divided by 3 factorial. That's minus 6 divided by 6. That's minus 1. So here are our coefficients, and now we just need to put those into a polynomial. Now remember, and the sort of biggest mistake that you might make here is we're not just multiplying by x to the n. We always multiply by x minus a to the n. So our first coefficient is our constant term. Our next coefficient is the coefficient not of x to the first power, but of x minus 1 to the first power. And then plus 1 times x minus 1 squared. And then minus 1 times x minus 1 cubed. So now we could multiply those out and simplify and get a maybe nicer looking polynomial, but it might be easier to just leave it in this factored out format so that we can tell what our coefficients were. And that's the third degree polynomial. All right, one more of these and then we'll move on to a different kind of problem. Similar question, again, here we're centered at a equals nine. So changes the formula just a little bit, but same basic pattern. We've got the series n goes from zero to infinity. We take the nth derivative of our function h and we're going to evaluate it at a equals nine. So nine is the center of my series here. Still gonna divide by n factorial, but this time I'm gonna be multiplying by x minus nine to the n. So I need to figure out my derivatives. First thing before I take any derivatives though, is I need to plug the center into my function, h of nine, that's the square root of nine, that's three. So that's my constant term, c zero is three divided by zero factorial, which is just three. Now I take first derivative, the derivative of square root of x, we're gonna think of square root of x as x to the one half. So that's gonna give me one half x to the minus one half. Plug nine into that, that's gonna give us one half times nine to the minus one half. And when we work that out, we get one sixth. So that means that C1 is one sixth divided by one factorial, which is just one sixth. Now what about C2? Well, there we need H double prime. We're gonna bring down that exponent. We get one half times the minus one half gives us minus one fourth. And then we subtract one from that exponent. So we get X to the minus three halves. So H double prime of nine is gonna be one fourth times nine to the minus three halves. And when we work that out, we get minus one over 108. So that means that C2 is minus one over 108 divided by two factorial, which is gonna give us minus one over 216. Finally, third derivative, h triple prime of x, we bring down the minus three halves times the one fourth that was already there, gives us positive three eighths, x to the minus five halves. Fractions get a little bit nastier here, but we can deal with it. Three eighths times nine to the minus five over two. We work all that out, that's gonna give us one over 648. So that means C3 is one over 648 divided by three factorials, so that's divided by six. That's gonna end up multiplying our denominator by six, which will give us one over 3888. So there are our coefficients. And so then our polynomial P3 of X is going to be our constant term three, plus our linear coefficient one sixth times X minus nine to the first power minus one over 216 times x minus nine squared, plus one over 3888 times x minus nine cubed. And we're definitely glad that we can just leave it in that format because we don't want to deal with all those nasty fractions any more than we already have. Okay, so now we're gonna look at examples for how we actually use these polynomials to help us do approximations. So, and this is really sort of the guts of what goes on inside a calculator when it's trying to approximate values of sine and cosine, exponential functions, logs, et cetera. It's using power series and adding up enough terms of power series to get an accurate enough answer for the display on the machine. So in this case, we wanna use the fourth degree Maclaurin polynomial for f of x equals e to the x to approximate e to the 0.04. So the actual full power series expansion of e to the x is the series n goes from zero to infinity. And we figured this out by doing all of the, um, uh, the analysis that we did before by taking all these derivatives. But what we end up with is x to the n divided by n factorial. Or in other words, one plus x plus x squared over two factorial plus x cubed over three factorial plus x to the fourth over four factorial and so on. But now we can't use all of those terms, right? Because that would literally take forever. So we make some decision for where to stop. And in this case, they've told us to stop at the fourth degree. So this much right here, that's my P4 of X. So all this problem is asking us to do is to plug 0.04 into that function. This says that E to the 0.04 is approximately equal to P4 of 0.04, which is equal to one plus 0.04 plus 0.04 squared 
divided by 2 factorial, which is just 2, plus 0.04 cubed, divided by 3 factorial, which is 6, plus 0.04 to the fourth, divided by 4 factorial, which is 24. And when we do all that and round to a certain number of decimal places, we get 1.04081, and that's our approximation. All right, similar problem here, except we're not only being asked to consider the function e to the x squared, we're also being asked to integrate it and use the polynomial to approximate that integral. So again, we're going to start by using the Taylor series or the Maclaurin series for e to the x, which is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 6 plus and so on. But we're going to stop there because we're being told to use p3 to do our approximation. So this much right here, that's my p3 of x. And so that means that e to the x squared is approximately equal to what I would get if I plugged x squared into that polynomial. So I'm plugging x squared in for x, which means x squared squared is x to the fourth, and then x squared cubed, that's x to the sixth. So that's the approximation that I want to use, and so that is going to tell me that the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x squared is going to be approximately equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of this polynomial. We're integrating a polynomial, so that's usually a pretty easy integral to do. Antiderivative of 1 is x. Antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3. Antiderivative of x to the 4th is x to the 5 over 5. We already had a 2 on the bottom there, so that's going to give us a 10. And then antiderivative of x to the 6th is x to the 7th over 7. We already had a 6 on the bottom, so we get 7 times 6, which is 42. We plug in 1, plug in 0, and subtract. That's going to give us 1 plus 1 third plus 1 tenth plus 1 over 42, and we work all that out and approximate to decimal places, we get 1.45714. And that's our approximation. And again, the ways to make that approximation better would be to use more terms of our Taylor series. The more terms we use, the more accurate these approximations are going to get. Right, one more of these. Again, we're doing an integral. Again, a slightly more complicated integral, but not one that we can use easily with the techniques that we've learned. So x times e to the minus x cubed. So we're using p2 of x. So p2 of x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2. Again, I'm just using the first three terms of my power series now. So that means that x e to the minus x cubed is going to be approximately equal to x times what I get when I take that polynomial and plug in minus x cubed, which is x times 1 minus x cubed plus minus x cubed squared divided by 2. That's x times 1 minus x cubed plus x to the 6th over 2, or in other words, x minus x to the 4th plus x to the 7th over 2. That's a polynomial approximation of the function x e to the minus x cubed, which means my integral can be approximated by the integral of that polynomial. So we're getting the integral of x minus x to the fourth plus x to the seventh over two. Again, we're integrating a polynomial, so not too bad of an integral there. We get one half x squared minus one fifth x to the fifth plus one sixteenth x to the eighth. We already had a one half there, so we get one sixteenth on the bottom. And then plug in four, plug in zero, and subtract. When we plug in zero, we just get zero, so this is going to give us one half four squared minus one fifth four to the fifth plus 1 16th, 4 to the 8th. And when we work all that out, we get 3899.2. And again, we could make that approximation better by using more terms of our Maclaurin series or our Taylor series, but this is what they asked us to do, so this is the approximation we get.